Caitlin, have you decided a name for your deity yet? Oh, I was just going to go with uh, what it was before. Oh, did I not? It didn't update. Crumbly. Yeah, yeah, all of your names show up as they are, but uh, feel, fr feel free to type it into the game chat. Hey, hey. If you want to have your name spelled out properly. I was just going to go with uh, Gaia. Gaia? Mm -hmm. Caitlin will be uh, taking, <gasps> basically shaping the planet itself. Uh, Can you be Go Gaia? <laughs> Has pa has power over like you know <laughs> raising of mountains, the flow of rivers, basically everything topographical. Uh, Shadow will be playing as the All Father, who has control over time and space. Basically, dictates the flow of time as it relates to pretty much everybody in the party. And Connor will be uh, I taking on the role. I'll be playing as the Silver Man. The Silver Man, the god Ooh. of creation and destruction. Uh, he'll be in charge of populating the world and dictating, you know, what happens when the mortals die. And Taka, have you figured out the name of your deity slash deities? Yes, I have, and I've been struck. No, I haven't. It's been really difficult. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie. You give me... All right, you can do whatever you want. Oh, no, Nick. You've given me the Skyrim dilemma. I Quick, know. I know. I, wanted, translator. I, I literally wanted to give you literally unlimited freedom. Oh, my God, Nick. No, you got... Nick, my whole career, I've, I've been on rails. Get me on the rails, Nick. I'm scared. So, I keep digging into the dirt and spinning in place. If, if you are many, you could be Legion. It's true. true. Mm. Legion and Legiona. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Their name sure. their name changes depending on which of the two you speak to. Oh, okay. Mm. Yes, that's right. The god of our name Water? are Legion and Steve. <laughs> and the in mm. the god the god of fire and the god of water. So, yes. All right. Uh so are you just Legion then? Yeah, I'm just going with Legion. Fuck it. I, I, I can't right. think of anything. There we go. Uh, Taka will be playing as Legion, the god slash gods of the elements. All the primordial elements, fire, water, wind, uh, basically controls all of the weather. And with that, we're going to roll in while I grab some thematically appropriate music. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do. That's my mystical sounding shit. At the beginning of everything, it was dark. Just dark. Before you existed, there was nothing. There was no movement. There was no passage. There was no time until there was time. All Father, you, you can feel the flow. You carry it with you. You control it. What shape do you take? The All Father takes the form of an in his thirties, pale of skin, a great bush of a beard of fiery red long locks of red hair a little sprigs in his hair but one eye is notably missing he often wears an eye patch over his eyes his hmm. skin abnormally pale but he speaks in a kind but deep booming voice as you test your voice echoing off into the abyss Greetings and salutations. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> yes, uh, hello, all father. Mm. Ah, greetings. How fare you this day? Well, good, I believe this is the 
first time we've met. This is the first time. I am Pox. I am Poxapopolis. A pleasure. Yes. I'm not sure what my purpose is as of yet, but I believe it is you we have to thank for this. Yes. I see Soon. a great vision ahead of us. I see very many wondrous things to spread throughout this cosmos, but I do not think I can do it alone, which is why you are here. He gives a little bit of a smile. Yes, and not just I. Soon, where there was darkness, there is light. <laughs> that was that was good. Bravo. He, he needed the lightest sound like a <laughs> Yep. Just, just <laughs> Heat begins to heat radiate. Oh. Heat radiates throughout the void as the many desperate particles begin scattering and clumping together throughout the galaxies and universes. Well, I guess throughout the universe as galaxies begin to form from those clumping particles. This is where the Silver Man begins to form. Silver Man, what shape do you take? Um, out of the darkness uh, comes a figure that is clad in sort of like this dark gray poncho that covers most of his body. Um, from underneath the poncho, uh, two... Um, Digitigrade legs with uh, cloven feet uh, stick out with uh, black hooves and dark gray hair or lighter a lighter gray fur. Um, his hands are hidden, uh, and on his face is a black and silver, highly stylized mask, and from his head sprouts two large silver antler-like horns. Hmm. It appears we have company. Greetings, Silver Man. I... Salutations to you, Silver Man. Greetings to you as well. I am... Poxapopolis, I still am unsure of my station here, but it seems you bring with you life, and as particles pass by you, they disintegrate into dust. Death. Hmm. He, raised, he raises a hand, and out of it um, is just bone, like long, gangly bone hands that just glow with this pale light. It seems you are correct. As time flows forward, now that time exists, the blinks of your eyes eons pass as these fiery rocks shooting around crash into each other. Gas balls begin to form stars in the sky. One particular ball of rock begins to cool. It's in a zone far enough away from its star to perhaps gain life and around that stone another begins to form. I sense we are not alone still. Gaia. The very planet cools under the rain as you rise forth from its vast oceans. What form do you take? So, up out of the ocean, uh, a volcano is forming, and as it erupts, a stone figure of a mature woman 
comes out and it's it's kind of like her her form is made out of like rock and and dirt and sand and in between the cracks as it moves and she moves there's trees and vines and out of the top of her head is kind of like a constant flowing river um that varies in length based on how it mists into uh uh evaporating um and she doesn't deal with clothing because she's uh, the plant life is is covering her form Hmm. she is beautiful she is the culmination of that world and what is this Greetings, Gaia. I am Poxapopolis. Uh, I guess these are your brethren. Poxapopolis. Yes. I am Gaia. Hmm. Very Mother nice. of Earth. Hmm. And this is your child. The... Uh, rather formless gas that is Poxapopolis gestures towards the large ocean-covered sphere around you. Not child. An extension of me. I am part of it. I control it as though I control an arm. And who are you? She looks at the Silver Man and the All Father. I am the Silver Man. I control life and death. I create and I destroy. Greetings and salutations. I am the All Father. I am the one that controls the passage of time in this place. Hmm. As the volcano fills the skies with its heat, clouds begin to form overhead. They drift by lazily. As rain begins to pour down on the heated volcanic rock, you hear it sizzle. Steam begins to rise up in the air, and the steam itself begins to form. Legion, what shape do you take? You see this giant spout of flames? Then disappear, sucking in all the air. It happens over and over again like an explosion happening getting bigger and bigger each explosion until it shrinks down and lands and you see a form of a person two legs and above it two arms but where the head and shoulders should be it's just a flame rising guy looks at this happening and looks back oh thank you so much for giving me life oh oh my that is not my doing (laughs) I like this one Mm. hard to say if it's anyone's doing Hmm. it's not mine Though that does bring some inspiration. And the Silver Man will... I'm I'm assuming we're, like, galaxy-sized, by the way. You are basically, uh, you, you can... You can dictate your size as you choose. When you are not in your, uh, corporeal mortal form, you can be as big as a galaxy if you want, yeah. Uh, well, then oh, I will... Oh my God. I will... Dip my continent-sized finger into the oceans 
and instead of a instead of a pale baleful glow, a warm almost orange glow uh, will begin to seep out and these organisms will start to take form. You start to create ocean life? Yeah. Alright, go ahead and give me a roll plus strange. I will certainly do this. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta, let me look at my stats. <laughs> it's 1d6, right? Plus uh, 2d6. 2d6, 2D6. Plus, uh, 2d6 plus 3, I believe. Everybody has a strange stat of 3. I will roll another d6 then. As long as you don't roll a uh, 1. Oh, that's damn. A 9. <laughs> All right. So it was almost a perfect success. Uh, uh, well, yeah. A 9. Yep. Uh, you begin... Prolifer you begin proliferating the sea with life. These volcanic vents appear to be the uh, epicenter where these li where this life begins to congregate around. They're feeding off of the uh, phosphorescent gases that are escaping from the planet as it is hypercooling under the oceans of rain that are currently downpouring upon it. That life begins to multiply, change. Oh. What's taken so long, anyway? I've only been around but a minute of it, it feels like an entire lifetime! Hundreds of years are passing for each of you in the blinks of your eyes. But it still Life. feels like a long time, because it, I mean, this is the first time anybody's experienced time. Hmm. If you want to see something... Then how about this? And Gaia, like, with a lot of tension, raises her arms and brings forth a continent covered in mountains with a nearby desert. Oh, that is absolutely impressive. But you're thinking only about substance. Where's the flair? Watch this. When you're ready, Nick, I'm going to do something too. If, uh, if go ahead, the go ahead, man could raise my... uh, Go ahead, uh, go ahead and describe what you're doing. You see Legion just shooting off as fast as he can, like the like the uh, oh god Johnny Storm from you know <laughs> yeah you know what I'm talking about Flamont like mm -hmm. he let goes yeah. right for the middle of the ocean, shoots down as low as he can, and starts burning as hot as he can. The oceans begin to boil. Uh, you evaporate vast amounts of sea as uh, more land from these mountains are beginning to be exposed around in the evaporation process. I start burning as hot as I can. As a matter of fact, he goes right into that same volcano again. You dive deep down into the volcano. Uh, it, it, feels it, it feels warm and mm. kind of cozy. It's it's a little hot, but you like it that way. Sorry, I'm just trying to grab my. No, it's all good, G. Take your time. That one. This one is intriguing. He is young, but it feels unfair to say. As the continent begins uh, rising around, uh, more of the uh, rock begins permeating from beneath as this massive continent begins to form. Uh, this continent itself right here is probably about the size of Australia. Whoa. All right. Mm, excellent. Yeah, mm. It looks lonely. Something you would be able to help with. He'll... Uh, he'll uh, raise a skeletal hand again. 
and the warm light will begin to glow off of him as vast jungles will begin to sprout up from this land. Excellent. And so it was that this land surrounded by mountain started seeing a proliferation of trees sprouting across its lands. Thin at first, but as time passes, as the rains continue to pour down, they grow larger and more dense. Magnificent. This mountainous region now teems with plant life as these uh, once barren deserts are host to various uh, plant-based microorganisms. At around this time in history, the ocean is now teeming with various vertebrate life. Large fish swim about the ocean, consuming each other, mating with each other, and just basically trying to survive. The planet itself has cooled significantly. And the Silver rains are slowly beginning to let up. Silver Man. Yes, Gaia. Was it your intent for them to keep creating themselves? The life I gave will continue to give. Hmm. It was not my intention, but I am happy. It is strange. What is strange? I did not expect them to grow as they have. Hmm. They consume each other. They die. They yes. bear others. Many others. Are you jealous? They have made more life than you at this point. No. I am proud. I wish to make more. These trees, I am not satisfied with just this. I wish to create more. I want to see what they do. Perhaps. Then make life that only can walk on the land. Yes. Walk. Of course. And he'll... He'll point his skeletal fingers down again uh, at this landmass and... Um, some of the more amphibious life, uh, will begin to adapt additional, uh, evolutions as they, out of the ocean, hop onto the land, and they breathe. You begin to and morph. And migrate. Uh, as you begin to morph the very life that you had given these creatures, providing them with the ability to, uh go on land in order to spawn and have their children 
then return to the o they return to the ocean. You watch as if in fast as if in fast motion on these uh, now slowly forming beaches in the winds. These creatures crawl up on land, bury their eggs, and crawl back out to sea. And as their young spawn, they go back out to sea as well. Again, this is in like hyper fast motion, but to your diligent deity eye, you're able to notice as if like one after another, as if sped up by a hundred times, on land, off land, on land, off land, they crawl further on land as they go. And this evolutionary track that you paint them with eventually allows some of them to hold the eggs within their own bodies as they proceed onto the land to escape much larger predators which the ocean is now teeming with. There are massive creatures beneath these waves. They crawl onto land and begin consuming the plant life that has sprouted and uh, become quite... Uh, the, it's, ba it's basically just become very prevalent on land. Mm. Fascinating. Yes. To have creatures I... living in the ocean and on land. I wonder what they will do with each other. Will Hard they hunt? Say. Will they avoid? Nah, I think they're going to avoid this fire. And just shoots fire near them. As you shoot a ball of fire, the trees ignite. Uh, the cre uh, All Father, would you like to dilate time to slow down this action? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Just so we can get a, so we can get a good look, and so hopefully, if uh, things go too far, the Silver Man can stop it. I see. The, I see these, the agent of chaos among us. <laughs> these creatures, as they have uh, grown more accustomed to land. Uh, they appear to be herbivore in nature, uh, although it, it seems more creatures are slowly trying to crawl out of the ocean as well. These creatures that seem uh, kind of like they they look very seal-like. They are like crawling on land. They've developed claws to allow them to climb up trees and eat food. Uh, as the tree lights on fire. A small group of them let out a series of yelping screeches as they begin to flee the now burning forest. Well, as far as I can tell, and as far as I see, I spent how long in the water making all the all of it just turn into clouds and all the water moves down to the land and then use it there so they can explore. So if I what? do that, I'm allowed to decorate it however I see fit. This is not decoration. You are destroying the habitat they live in. I know, but they're gonna have to find a new habitat, and through that experience, change. <sighs> what? When You'll the status quo is appended, that is when change happens. You keep fading and in that's... and out. Oh, I do? Yeah. Nope. You'll have to speak up, Legion. I, yeah, when you, I think it's when you're leaning I, away from your mic. Oh. Oh. And there he goes again. No, I'm sorry about that. You, know, you see, when you do destruction, and they go and they run away and they change, that changes who they are. And if they have nothing to hear, then what is the point of being here? Hmm. He is right. They must grow stronger. I want to see what they do. When faced with a challenge such as this. They flee further into the forest, uh, fleeing the fires. Uh, they realize that there is no escape within the forest. These creatures are not intelligent. So they flee back outwards towards the beaches, back uh, the way they came from the burning forest, where they are met with very large alligator-like creatures. Ew, what's that? 
good. <laughs> they sense that food is near, and while they are not quite as fast as these uh, now quadrupedal seal deers, basically, uh, they do lie in ambush, their rocky exterior hiding them from these creatures as they set off an ambush. The creatures now don't know which way to flee, back towards the fires of the forest or toward the gaping maw of the uh, rock gators. So they choose the only path that they think is less painful and head back towards the forest where uh, the burn uh, has given way to what looks to be a very large lake. at the southern part of the continent. They begin to create their colony around this watering hole as the rock gators continue to move uh, further and further inland as the uh, prey that is crawling up to lay their eggs slowly starts to dry out. They realize that this food source living on land is very easy and stupid. They begin migrating inward as well. Hmm. It would seem the sea creatures have more intelligence than the land creatures. It would seem so. <laughs> and how about that? A little bit of chaos. They haven't they... had as much time in existence. No. It hardly seems die. fair. It does not. They will die if this continues. I wonder if they could use a little advantage. And he'll briefly swipe his hands and a little little sprinkle of, of stardust of that warm radiant light will trickle over them and they'll begin to sprout antlers with which These to defend themselves. Uh, crafting them some natural defenses. Go ahead and give me a roll plus strange. Roll plus a strange. Is it going to be? Roll 2d6 plus 3. That's going to be, oh, not great, 6. Uh, as their natural defenses begin to come in, uh, this, this appears as a mutation to the uh, would-be mating partners and the ones that have these freakish horns growing out of their head effective though they might be in warding off intruders uh, start to be treated as pariahs of the group and are basically left mateless what are they doing hmm it does not appear as though your plan has worked as you wished hmm for some reason, I fear for them more than the other creatures. With so many predators, maybe the the crocodiles are where again? Uh, the crocodiles at this Rockadiles. point, yeah, Sorry. have uh, have kind of migrated to this area. Uh, it is an area plush with low lying. Uh, grassy vegetation that these creatures feed off of and uh, plush with rocks for which they will disguise themselves uh, like where they will camouflage themselves in the weight of an ambush Gaia lifts her hand and turns it into a mountain so that there's uh, a mountain on the other side of the lake between the uh, rockadiles and the and where they've set up their civilization, yeah. All right. A large, uh, lifeless, mountainous pass forms between the lake grounds, the home of the deer seals, and the ambush grounds of the Rockadile. As this mountain crawls, uh, as this mountain shoots up into the sky, you see like eight to ten 
try like eight to ten ambush points worth of rocket isles just go clattering down the back part of the mountain killing them instantly whoops <laughs> oh I didn't even have to do anything the creature you know what I realized had a harder time it seemed only fair you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling it's not damp enough. You know what I mean? Maybe it should be a little bit damper. Most of this right. rock is water. Imagine it was the water in the air even more, and then you see him just like run, essentially, like shoot all the way down to the water again. He's gonna try and make storms. All right, uh, dark clouds begin to peer in the sky. This isn't even something you need to jump into the water to do, but you do shoot some of the seawater into the air, evaporating it into the sky as dark clouds begin to form over this continent, bringing down torrential downpours, uh, thickening the forested areas, but also growing the uh, lakelands of this uh, continent by a significant degree as well. And now, would you look at that? And if I could swear to better, I took all that nasty salt out of the water, too. Hmm. Curious to see what they do now with all the new play places they have to have fun. The land the entire... will be running out of land, though. If there is more water, then they need more land. Well, that's for you to take care of. You're in charge of that. Mm. Gaia raises both her arms out on either side and doubles the size of the continent. Oh, shit. <laughs> the uh, very land quakes beneath it as uh, the rockadiles that have been making camps on all the rocky beaches on the outside uh, begin tumbling into the water. Uh, a lot of the land begins to displace. Fractures begin to appear within the uh, rocks themselves and rivers begin to form between those fractures. There. I can't help it if they fall in between. They seem to be very clumsy creatures. The tiniest thing disrupts them. That is incredibly true. Hmm. Oh, the, Father. Yes, the water that is inland is without salt. Makes me curious if a different form of life will be able to survive there rather than in the oceans. Hmm. Its makeup is quite different. I could try. And he'll sort of just very quickly just dip his finger into one of the pools. Create life. All right, you try to create life uh, along the land. What form do you want this life to take? Um... I would like the life to take um, sort of a morph, uh, sort of a, a fishy type of life, uh, am amphibious, okay. lives on the land and the ocean. Go ahead and give me a... Uh, yeah, now that you've seen that type of race exist, it's just something you kind of have in the back of your mind. Go ahead and give me a roll plus strange. Here I go again on my own. Uh, a 10. And so comes forth a race of amphibians, these little gecko-like creatures that start out as small little wriggling almost uh like 
like they almost look like amoeba at first, but as they mature, they form kind of like a a gelatinous chrysalis about them, and they begin to grow arms and legs, and they begin to crawl out onto the land, and they begin uh, hopping forth and exploring their surroundings. Starting very small, not very far from land, they they begin eating. Uh, like, attempting to eat various things. The plants don't seem to be appeasing them, though. It is the only life forms which they have to consume. But it does not seem to be growing them at their full potential. Further, another race of amphibian-like beings start to grow. These, these more toad-like. What of a smaller race of creatures we've seen in the oceans how they feed off of each other and recreate each other. There are, there's, they consume the flesh of others. What if these small reptile creatures had a smaller creature to consume that could? feed off of the plants. Say something that may crawl on the on the ground or may have some kind of tiny wings to fly through the air. I might add there's also another issue to be dealt with, sir. Uh, I know it's been a few eons since I spoke up, but uh, many of those deer creatures that are dying, their bodies appear to just be rotting and it appears to be spreading disease throughout their tribes. Perhaps you could solve both problems at the same time. They can eat mm. the deer. Still. Interesting. A creature that is neither mammal nor aquatic roams on the land and consumes rotten flesh. Without getting sick, I could. The lands are becoming field, though. Where would their hunting grounds be that would not take up more land? Could they take to the sky? What say you, Silver Man? Why not both? Uh, I'll, I will, uh, flex my skeletal hands once more, and I will attempt to create bugs. All right, go ahead and give me a roll plus strange to create a new form of life. Here I go! Uh, 12. Oh, Yeah! As, as you usher yourself down towards the rotting corpse of one of these sealed deers, uh, their necks appear to be getting longer with time. You kind of wave your hand over its corpse, which is... It smells none too good. And from within its belly, you begin to see it bubble over with at life and activity as uh, various multi-legged creatures, tiny creatures, begin crawling amongst its flesh, consuming the rotting flesh, laying their eggs within it. And as time quickly passes for you, destroy, like, basically desiccates it, turning it into nothing but more than a skeleton with little to no flesh on it. These creatures begin to spread amongst the island. These creatures continue flying, eating more dead bodies, and the little amphibio, uh, uh, amphibinoid creatures that you created by the lake begin consuming them as well. Fascinating. Another side effect that you notice upon examining the uh, nest of the amphibinoids is as they continue to spread, they, they have been spreading far and wide on this island, traveling up, uh, traveling up the river, uh, 
eventually making it to the northern rocky beaches, you find more dead bodies of these rockadiles, which have grown bigger and uh, they their scales harder. Some of them appear to be dying significantly prematurely. What is this? Silly. It is not a silly question if it is the first question. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> you have now invented questions. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Um, feel free, uh, anybody who would like to try to figure this mystery out, feel free to make a roll plus smarts. I will do this. I'll I will do, do this too. as well. Uh, Oof. Uh, eight. Thirteen. Where is this? Eight. Is it? Is it in the? Uh, Should have just roll two d six, and I gave and I gave you your character sheet in a DM. Oh. Eleven. Oh, smarts, you said? Okay. Yes. Okay. It's 2d6 plus. Okay. Sorry. The answer came very quickly to the very observant Allfather, who Six. noticed... <laughs> yeah. Uh, unsurprisingly, Legion does not care too much about the dead rockadiles. Uh, Allfather... It did not take much observation to notice that these uh, little fire-bellied geckos, which have been growing uh, larger and more bold, appear to be uh, getting eaten by these rockadiles as they travel through their lands, but the rockadiles react very poorly to them. These creatures appear to be poisonous to this life form. <laughs> Wonderful! These small creatures appear to have created a defense for themselves. Their bodies, when consumed, act poorly. Some chemical reaction inside of their bodies caused the rockadiles to perish upon being consumed. A chaotic little creature. I admire their ingenuity. Already so much work has been put into making life. The I fear that Legion will move. destroy them at a moment. The rocket ah, will kind of learn to what's avoid going on them. right now. If it gets too boring, then uh. Well, as a precaution, she, like, focuses really hard, and then raises both arms, and then creates multiple continents all over the rest of the planet. Ooh, all thank right. you. Excellent. Uh, Nick, while you're doing that, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, you're a god. I, I I can't tell you what to do. Uh, Nick, I'm being polite. Legion, Legion just walked away. First time for everything. I will create these continents. Don't do not worry about Legion. I've put him in stasis for a little bit. Interesting. Then the continent has a chance to grow for a bit. Yes. Under the vast rainlands, these continents begin to uh, pop out of the ocean. It'll take me a while to form them properly, but we'll get there. <laughs> we're almost in building the day. It, twirl it truly were not, but eons have passed by now, so... Uh, as these uh, as these mountains and uh, fields begin to rise from the ocean, uh, give me as drawing. There we go. That'll help me. Uh, the land itself continues to thrive with these forms of life as yet more of these amphibious creatures uh, spawn from the waters. You see creatures uh, that 
begin to uh, kind of like grow fur about them as as the rockadile population begins to drop from these amphibians. More creatures begin to grow bolder and travel forth onto land. Uh, many of them start uh, very very similar to the uh, seal deer have hair, but uh, as opposed to the rock like much like the rockadile, some of these are also carnivorous. They begin to discover that the amphibians are uh, not to be consumed, and uh, then focus their time mainly hunting these uh, <laughs> deer seals. How are the deal? Uh, the how how are they looking? Are they still endangered? They have. Uh, they are no longer endangered, as the rockadiles no lo- were no longer an issue. Uh, they adapted very well to consuming tree life as their necks have grown longer and they are able to kind of like halter themselves up onto the trees. They, they almost look closer to deer giraffes at the moment. Ooh. Fascinating. Hmm. They adapt so quickly. A thought occurs to me. The tree life, the plant life, what if it produced something that would assist those that consume plants? Like a bulb of nutrients. Mm. Bulb of nutrients. A, I believe, a fruit? It could assist maybe some of the smaller insects in bringing the plant life to other locations to make much more plants so that we can make much more leaf consumers. Interesting. Mm. Sherman, be quiet. (laughs) Uh, Fruit of flesh, small creatures that grow from plants. I will, uh, I will go down to like a like a bush, and I'll just begin to tap uh, individual parts of the plant uh, until berries begin forming. Go ahead and give me a roll plus strange to determine the nature of the berries. Doing this a lot today. <laughs> it's been a hell of an eon. Eight. The berries you produce, uh, they are a bright blue in color, almost a cyan. They uh, look, uh, they look and smell uh, fa- fairly sweet, especially when the sun beams down on them. Uh, as some of the newer land dwellers approach uh, and consume it, they appear to enjoy it. Hmm. It looks a bit simple. Why not make fruit that that lives in the same way that the rest of the creatures do? All of the plants live, Gaia. Hmm. Every blade of grass, every tree, they all live. They all consume each other. They all die, eventually. I know, but I do think it would be funny if the fruit of plants were more mm, alive. I don't get it. Well, the other creature- it was gonna be funny, I don't get the joke. Why is that funny? The other creatures can move. Would not it be funny to see something form from a tree but be stuck until it is done ripening? Some of these fruits have fallen on their own. What if when they fall, they move in the same way land dwellers do? I like it! Like a berry with legs? Why not? 
I can do you one better. <laughs> How about when fire burns it, then it's released. It what? Yeah, every time, you, I don't know if it's the filter you're using, but like... Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, I'll stop using it. <laughs> I just, it clearly is not working, so... Unfortunately. Wop wop! It what? Big oof. Well, imagine this. So it lands and then it walks away after it's free of the tree, right? Right. Well, how will that happen? It will happen every day. If it happens all the time, then it's going to spread everywhere. Nothing can stop these things. Well, then why not create a time, a, a, a specific amount of time? Uh, well, well, if, you, if, if, you, if you would want a specific time or something like that, then it, it means the air would need to be different or something. There need to be some kind of difference. I mean, I could change the temperature. If we were to, oh, wait a minute, that gives me an idea. And then you you see him fly off to the poles. All right. And he just shoots down into the poles, and he is going to try and create a hot and cold season. All right, you begin to uh, freeze over the, uh, we'll just go ahead and say northern pole. No, let's make it confusing. The east! The south of the east. No, ah, the eastern pole. Yeah, the, you know what? You're the god. <laughs> eastern, oh. yeah, I just head to the eastern pole. Oh my. This place Middle now of the world's cold now. Middle of the world's cold now. Tough slot, guys. The equator's freezing. Well, this planet now... Of humanity. It, here's the thing. In order for it to be a pole, the Earth, this planet now rotates north and south, so... Yeah, oh. buddy! Yes, we do! All right, so uh, as you as you head directly over to the East Pole, which is uh, exactly how this planet works, because you are the ones that decide how this planet works, mm -hmm. uh, you begin to create a massive icy, uh, fro like a massive frosty zone. I can't find my ice, so I'm just going to use this horrific draw tool. Ice. <laughs> That's got to be ice. And Gaia, as this has been happening, uh, with all the weather happening, the uh, second continent, which you have deemed into existence, has begun to form as well. Hmm. And has taken its relative shape. Plenty of space for more creations. And as the wintry winds begin to glow, uh, blow in from the east <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and west, I guess, as the ice begins to wrap around the east-west meeting point of the planet, a large sheet of ice that forms, the wintry winds blow in, uh, creating a seasonal derelict where now the very center from uh, north to south on this planet is now essentially a uh, spring zone and creatures begin to navigate in thusly. Uh, further, on this new continent that you have formed, more creatures begin to crawl out of the ocean onto it. Uh, creatures that lived further to the south and now trying to escape these frigid waters from the east begin crawling out onto land this way. More mammalian-like creatures. These ones uh, also kind of seal-like, but uh, they have more pointed features. Hmm. So let me... Intriguing. Now may we have the walking berries? I forgot that's why you were doing this. <laughs> <laughs> this is all for the elderberries, dude, okay? We're doing this all for the Saskatoon berries. All for the delicious berries. If you think it would be funny... Do not we uh, have all the time? Hmm. In the worst way... If it was to go badly, 
I could merely submerge the continent and make a new one. Please don't. <laughs> uh, Nick, I'm gonna etch a sketch this whole thing because my god's angry. Okay. I will move it. I will move it to the other layer. Ah, oh, now, now it's nothing. I was drawing on the wrong layer. Shit. Oh no, that's the worst. Also, we lost Bab. Yep. Oh no, did we? We oh, lost yeah. Bob's. That's why he's been quiet. Yeah. It has been a hot minute since we've heard I'm the All Father. Really hard. He's AFK. Do a well, celebrate. Well, while you uh, continue sketching what you were doing, and while we wait for uh, Shadow to return. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's back. Yay. Norm! Is. Oh, there he is. The All Father has returned. All Father. Boom, Time. Time seemed to stop without him. Oh no, does this mean, is this what happens when you're banished from death? It sounds that, like it. You still, uh, you still there, Shadow? Yeah, my power went out. Oh shit. No. Oh! Good a reason as Sometimes any. Sometimes then come back on. Woo! Ah. <sighs> I shall try to create these berries with legs. Mm. Berries with legs. I All right. Um, kind of, as kind of my fail. <laughs> well, let's see. Strange. Roll it. Man, I can't wait. At da, 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 thirteen. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. You, you walk it. Okay. Damn it. You I wanted you... spiders. <laughs> Well, you walk up to a tree, and with all the experience you've had giving life to these mammalian and amphibious creatures, you wonder, why not fruit? And so, you give fruit sentient life as this large plum plops down into the palm of your hand. Two eyes open up. A mouth begins to form arms and legs of I mean I, I just like I, twigs and I flowers can't, can't. form out of the side of its hands it looks up at you <laughs> I can't believe I created Conqueror's Bad Fur Day yeah you did excellent that was the world of the building guys <laughs> and as, as the, as the tree be, as the tree begins to rain these uh, mandraga repairs uh, the uh, low dwelling, I, they they basically uh, these these, for the lack of better term, pig manatees, start looking over, start licking their lips, and start <laughs> charging towards the Mandraga repairs as they scream and flee. I have made a mistake. I was right. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Oh my gosh, what's going on there? I'm still in the Arctic, which is in the east. And so jokes were invented. <laughs> I I grew them wrong as a joke. <laughs> you grew them perfectly as a joke. If you, and, you've got an ass, I can kick it. And so time continues to pass. And here is where we will take a quick break while I figure right. out the evolutionary line of pig manatees <laughs> and sentient pears. I can't You're believe I'm, 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 I can't believe I accidentally created the busty sunflower. Hey guys, Lanny here. If you're liking what you're watching, feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button. It really helps me feel the love for this series. And if you want to catch us live, feel free to hit us up on twitch.tv slash Lanny Mondays at 5 o'clock central time. Thanks for rolling with me. Now let's get back to the action. So as time has continued to pass, uh, Allfather, you, you made a claim that you wanted to do something after we returned. Yes. Um, Silverman, I have an idea. It's a marvelous idea. It's not going to be another living pair idea, is it? No. It is a living orange. Or yes. yes, a very small, a very small fruit that is entirely orange with a thick peel on the outside. 
Hmm. The pairs this... must have companions, yes? I suppose. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> he is right, though. With no variants, the walking fruit could die out with no way to repopulate itself. The Allfather just looks over at Silverman with the biggest uh, poo-eating grin. Surely if there was another type of species, then they could have some kind of parentage. Oh my God. The, the fruits <clears throat> have begun creating colonies in the trees in which they are born. Uh, they start to live in groups, tribes even, where uh, they avoid the land-dwelling herbivores, which are their <laughs> sworn predators. Interesting. Eventually, Interesting. they even start they even start learning how to manipulate tools out of the trees themselves. The pears? Yes. They start forming small tools to help build better shelters amongst the uh, branches. Areas where their uh, babies will spawn. Uh, as they have no need for actual reproduction, their corpses eventually just sprout more trees and plants. They simply starts uh, gathering up the young before they plop to the ground and creating nurseries for them amongst the treetops. They appear to be the most intelligent species of all so far. It seems as though the funny was worth it. Perhaps. Sherman, be quiet. God damn. <laughs> me, me, damn. <laughs> I'll come over there. You hear a new voice for the first time echoing through the back of your mind. Uh, this is actually directed at uh, you, Silverman. Please. Give us the means for which we can defend ourselves. Whoa. <laughs> he'll, 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 like, do the SpongeBob caveman pose. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they speak the international, the intergalactic language. English. I'm hearing something. Like if what? You are, if you are listening, please, to the one who gave us life, give us the power to see our vanquishers rot from the land. May our victory be fruitful in your name. I pledge my service. May I, I, Jesus Christ. I'd like to, I'd like to <laughs> look down on the being that is uh, saying this to me. Uh, through your God's eye, you've like, are able to get a view of this pair. <laughs> it is a uh, <laughs> it is a uh, spotted green. Uh, it is a green pair with uh, kind of these orange spots over it, uh, almost in kind of a leopard pattern. It is uh, kneeling by the uh, devoured body of one of its brethren. They have taken so many of ours. And we will... We will fight back. You made us. We do this to please you. Please give me the strength. 
May my juice flow for thee. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's good shit. There's no difference between them and humans. I don't give a fuck. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. It's the same so, shit. <clears throat> could I... Could I... Could I take a, a, a closer look at, at what might have done this to this other pair person? Person? Uh, you can give me a roll plus smarts. That's gonna be... Wait, smarts? Yes, that'll also be three. Uh, ten. Uh, definitely appears to be, uh, from the tracks, looks to be some of those uh, manatee pigs. So what will you do, Silverman? Did you not say you were proud? They are creating life. They are dying. This is new. They are asking me directly for help. He, he turns to everybody else. What should I do? Pox speaks up. You will do what you believe is right. For what you do is right. I will slow down time for the mortals. <laughs> and give the silver man time to think. They ask me for help. They want me to help them vanquish their predators. Mm. They, ask, they ask one who created them to destroy another one of his creations. Perhaps... I, Perhaps a sign or a gift. Maybe not wiping out the species itself, but providing them a direction or a means to do so. Or you could just ignore them entirely, as is your will. You could breed a weakness into their opposers or create another species that would work with them against their oppressors they they must go they must grow strong through chaos and strife they grow strong i'll i'll look at while I have the time, I'm going to observe the other manatee pig-like species and see what they're all about. Uh, they're relatively unintelligent species. They appear to uh, live around the riverbanks of the continents. Uh, very much like hippos, almost, where in the evenings and in the hot day sun, they'll just kind of... Uh, go waist deep into the water and just keep their nostrils above. They appear to be able to hold their breath for a very long time. Uh, they keep their bodies cool down there, but when they feel the need to, they plop out of the mud and wander into the forests to forage for uh, apparently their their preferred food is now these this race of pear people. Oh, is it now? Oh boy. You could teach them of the newt-like creatures that gave trouble to the Rockadiles. Allow them to use those creatures against the pig manatees. You mean make some of them poisonous? Or teach them to use the poison to hunt they they are showing that they're ingenuitive they're showing they're intelligent 
why not give them a little nudge, give them a little tool that they can use? Wait. The the fire bellies. They yes. are poisonous when eaten. Yes. Why not direct them to the fruit, the the pear people? They can use <laughs> them as as mounts and can more quickly run away. Or when they are eaten, the creatures will decide that it is dangerous to eat them if they are together. Or that is a valid valid thought, yes. Or if the fire bellies make the poison via their skin, simply tip the weapons that they've begun to use in the poison. Weapons? Didn't they say, uh, Lanny, that they were, didn't you say that they were starting to get weapons? Uh, yes, they've started to fashion very crude spears out of uh, sticks. They are not very big, as these pear creatures are probably about the size of a like uh, of a summer squash, like they're maybe a foot tall. So these spears that they have are crude and probably not big enough to deal with these um, mana pigs. Or another thing that you could do assist the pear people in becoming extremely bitter to the taste so that the pig people will not wish to consume them. Hmm. Then but then they would we... have no predators. Their growth would be unchecked. True. And the pigs would stop eating. Hmm. Well, everyone's gotta eat. And besides, I think there's time for a little bit of... A chaos. What do you have planned, Legion? Although, oh. I should say, I doubt you plan things. Well, let's just say I'm going to introduce... an X-Factor. And you see him port on down to the main settlement of... Is there a settlement for the oh, pair of people? no. Uh, yes, and you can appear to be about their size, too. And you can even choose to take the form of a pair if you want it. God. No, 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 no. No, he just lands in the middle of town. Ten how, times how, the how... size, made of fire. Okay, so you are ten feet tall and made of fire? Yes. All right. Uh, as you land in a column of fire at the center of this wooden conclave, oh, no. uh, things begin to burn around you as the commotion you start uh, begins to terrify those uh, in uh, in your presence. You see the pears begin to run, uh, trying to fetch as many baby pears as they can out of the nurseries as the fire begins to spread about the treetop. I, he tries to minimize the fire the best he can. Like, he just stops it. Yeah, it you, only you, is on him. He doesn't want, he's just trying to be there physically. You can very easily snuff out the fire. You have enough power to do that. But your landing definitely caused a stir. And as you see some of these uh, pear rents holding these baby <laughs> pears as they're, like, looking out the front of the nursery, all eyes in this community are on you. There are whispers. What's happening? What is this? A giant creature. Are we going to die? And then he flies up into the sky again. And now he heads for the other group's city or main main dwelling, main city, main village, whatever you wish to uh, call it. These, these villages are, uh, there are probably about six or seven communities of these things throughout the continents. Okay. Uh, they're relatively spread out. They appear to grow primarily from the trees that were uh, indigenous to the land. So you, one after another, create this same commotion as you go between all of these lands. And uh, he, so, he does this to each town in each grouping. Mm -hmm. And causes damage and then runs off as far to the north as he can. All right. Uh, would that be out into the ocean, or would that be out into the uh, as far north on the continent as you can? 
You know what? Switch that up here. I'm going to head to the Arctic. All right, you head off to the east. The eastern pole. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Uh, through God Radio. <laughs> your commotion. God your... Radio. <laughs> yeah, through God Radio, you hear basically all of these very confused voices uh, praying that you never return. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's how you do it and now they all got something to talk about and something that unites them now the question is will they use that to find out me and chase me away from their lands or will nothing change and they're still so focused on each other that's the question just a little bit of chaos <laughs> So now they have two primary problems. Their primary yeah. predator and this mysterious fireman. <laughs> that also went after their predator as well. Uh, you you said you were only going to the pear towns. Oh, no, I wanted to go to the other factions' towns as well. Oh, uh, okay. So the 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 pear pigs live, in, like, by and around ponds as you... Or the, uh, yeah, the pear-eating mm -hmm. pigs, the piggities, live by and around the ponds and as you land in front of them you startle them but they're more confused than anything they are too stupid to understand that you are a threat <laughs> so you have done a great job in causing panic in all of the pair communities and the pigs are frightened but then sleep I will first try sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, I will. If they if they like the taste of uh, they like the taste of plants so much, I will make other plants uh, for them to eat that are not sentient. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a roll plus strange to create more. Hopefully non-sentient plants. I'm going to try and create some uh, green, specifically. Okay. Some Here vegetation rather than fruit. That's the tent. All right. Uh, grassy fields begin popping up all around the uh, watery hillside. Uh, they begin to kind of like bushel up into this very tall grass the seal deer seem to enjoy this uh, the pig manatees also eat this and it does kind of hinder their ability as this tall grass kind of takes over the uh, hill lands by the water uh, it hinders their ability to get to the primary hunting ground of these pairs giving them some uh, much needed respite uh, the grass begins to spore and spread as the wind carries it through the air and uh, begins seeding throughout the rest of the continent and some of the wind actually carries the grass across the continental uh, divide, the uh, channel that runs between the northern and southern continent here and the grain oh. begins to spread down that way too. The pairs are beginning to learn more and more about how this world works. Uh, they realize that uh, as they flower in this planet's springtime, the uh, some of the bugs fly over to carry off some of their the flower that uh, some of the pollen from their flowers. They start working alongside these bugs to help propagate their uh, li their way of life, basically. Using them uh, for creating various concoctions uh, through... <laughs> uh, they are starting to learn alchemy. Hell and yes. they are also starting to grow bolder as their weapons become better. Uh, as they... S very much like you anticipated, Gaia... Uh, as they worked more with bugs, the bugs' primary uh, hunter began showing up more and more, and they started domesticating the uh, fire-bellied geckos. 
alchemist gecko writing fruit people there's yeah they're Otherwise, starting to they're starting to develop language and now they are uh, starting to explore the land now that they're feeling more and more comfortable they're starting to dig into the earth to see what resources awaits them in the mountains They climb down the tree trunks and travel into the earth through the gaps in the earth that the uh, roots form in order to minimize the amount of space they need to walk. And there they begin to discover uh, metallurgy. Hmm. Hmm. A lot is happening. It's strange that they go beneath the earth when they need the light from that star to grow and become beings. So why go where it might be dangerous? At any time, the Earth could collapse. Only should you choose to. Mm -hmm. They seek well, to improve themselves by exploring places that they have never gone before they find things that they never had before. They explore that which is unknown to them. Their curiosity amuses me. What if Gaia, they were... Mm. You hear a voice. Mm -hmm. Provider of the land, you grant us with your gifts. Please, provide us a hefty bounty for which to expand our empire. A bounty? Hmm. So my signal. They request help, a bounty so that they may propagate further. Should the I help them? The voice continues on. We know the great flame of ancient past will return. We need to consolidate our resources. We need to become more powerful to face the looming threat. Leighton. Firebringer. They think you will return. You are a nightmarish figure in their history. <laughs> Oh, isn't Wait, that interesting? So they always gotta try and be the best they can to survive if I ever show up again. Look at that, how far they've progressed from fear. Hmm. Fear of things to be not as they are at that current moment. It gives them if all they meaning. become violent, it will be because of you. Oh, some of them probably will become violent. But that's hmm. part of it. They will try to conquer you, Legion. <laughs> While this is being said, Legion, you have another voice in your here in your head. Great Firebringer, terrorizer of the man pigs. We beseech your bounty once more. Grant us your power, so that we may vanquish the non-believers. Okay, but I like I like like want want lots of virgin sacrifices. Don't ask. It's all good. Your okay, will be done. Do no, 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 I don't actually do that. Don't actually <laughs> oh, do that. No. Don't actually do that. No, I was JKing. I was just really big JK. So, don't kill the pearlings. No. Do not don't must do that. We, no. What must we do for you, my lord? Well. That you may grant us power. Grant you power. Well, you must promise to only use it. In my glory, thy will be done. I only heard half of that conversation, and I'm not happy. I go give going. I give. Am I able to do anything I want? You are a god. I give <laughs> one of the pairs the ability to catch on fire, but it doesn't hurt. You give one pair the ability to manipulate the elemental force of fire. Give me a roll yeah. plus strange. Oh no, no. Roll plus strange, oh. A eh, Nick? Let's mm -hmm. find your name. Sorry, I had to reboot Discord. I got a. Uh, 2d6 oh, plus 3. 
seven. Ooh. <laughs> Immediately, the pair, like the, the one that was praying to you, yes! <sighs> the Lord has gifted me his flames! Thank you, my Lord, by your glory. I shall bring peace to all pair. Yeah, you do you, man. Legion, what have you done? A little bit of chaos. It seems imbalanced to only give one element to these creatures. I will bestow the gift of earth movement to a much lesser degree to the pearling oh, that reached out to me. All right, go ahead and give me a roll plus strange. Oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. Nine. Uh, plus three, oh, right? Oh, I'm sorry, ten. Uh, so now we have an earth, an earth bender, and a fire bender. Yep. Oops. Uh, while while it is still praying to you, my, it, you can hear like it, it shudders for a moment. Huh? I can. I can carve a path myself. I can bring forth the metal. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Gaia's face comes up from the earth. <laughs> You can see this teary-eyed pair, uh, green with red speckles all over, kind of like freckles, staring at you in awe and reverence. You see uh, the, like, as it falls backwards, the earth kind of, like, cushions them, uh, kind of instinctually on their end, bending the earth. <sighs> Be wise with your decisions of this gift. If you use it for ill, my wrath will be great. And she disappears into the earth again. Of course. My lord. In Fairly God time, true. not too long after that, you start to see some of the villages begin to burn. Torch the non-believers! Legion. As uh, wielding weapons uh, held together, like uh, resin-coated weapons covered with fire, uh, a legion of pears descend upon village after village, converting them to their ways, uh, while the peaceful earth-bending pears consolidate their uh, abilities and defend themselves they begin to realize that soon the uh, fire pear nation will attack upon their tree as I those don't that believe it as those that uh, have not gone their way uh, some of the forests have burned out uh, for, to those that would not join the crusade uh, the earth bend the pair with the mighty earth bender among them seems to hold off their pursuit by raising up defenses as their colony continues to try to find a way. Uh, eventually, this very large religious zealot uprising will be upon them, but they are working to keep their species alive, and they might have found a way. Gaia gets really pissed because Legion was being so... Uh, flippant about giving this power away that has such a destructive ability. So she sees every like kind of heretical person that has done evil in this army and like has the earth eat them, sink them, and crush them. Hey, come on, they were sieging the third town. Okay, yes, so and there was too much. To your description, these these tree these treetop dwelling creatures, the trees are going to have to be consumed as well by doing this. Uh, in your godly wrath, think, think of like what is it? Stalag is it the one that comes out of the earth is like stalactite type? Uh, stalagmites like, are the ones that grow upward. Basically, think of that almost whip like catching them and sucking them into the earth. That is going to be a roll plus strange because that is That's very fine. specific, not all it's encompassing. It's super wrath. specific. It'll be a nine. 
uh, as basically a pin cushion of rocky spikes shoot upward uh, from the forest floor, stabbing into as many of the pairs that you believe to be evil as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. You momentarily at least put an end to this uprising as these pairs are like speared and struck uh, a fair number of innocent pairs along with them and those that just gave up and went along with it so they would not become roasted uh, kind of indiscriminately as these spears shoot up and take out a, bi a big chunk of the northwestern pair colony. I was really hoping for a higher roll. <laughs> mm, me too. But here we are. You got, you got that mixed result. You did you did get what you wanted, though, in that the uh, conquest was put aside for at least uh, at least a few years while this uh, religion tries to regain its fervor. Uh, all this time, by the way, uh, Legion, you are now getting prayers upon prayers of these pairs. Really, yeah, these prayer pairs. Uh... All this terribleness and cruelness has happened. You, their savior, please, Lord, protect us. us. Are they still being hunted by the by the pig people? Uh, those that have learned to manipulate the elements and the tools have found ways to, uh, at the very least, defend themselves from the pigs. The pigs have also, after realizing they are much harder to consume and hunt, have gone about to consuming the grain and berries that you have provided. Okay. But every now and again, the odd pair will get caught. Kind of like, you know, if people still get eaten by wolves. So kind of in that way. Like, they're still kind of a medieval society. Kind mm. of getting close to their uh, renaissance period. The time that you were able to buy them, Gaia, the... Uh, peaceful pair people of the southern forest have been able to give the bugs that they have domesticated these bees uh, a number of basically pear seeds and pollen and have set them forth to propagate another land and so they travel southward to start populating a new continent using these bees as an arc. Hell yeah. So these pear people who have uh, grown and kind of mutated over time start to now populate this uh, other continent. Trees begin to appear and eventually the fires of rebellion roar once again to the west and begins to spread once more as their beloved firebringer continues his scourge of the northern island Lanny while this is going on the Allfather has selected a single pearling over oh, the course no. of the entirety of this war and this crusade and everything like that and he uh -huh. has selected a single pearling, and over the course of the pearling's life, just in the back of its mind, it uh, the All Father has been showing the pearling guidance and so on and so forth. And I would like to make that pearling, that single pearling, my cleric. Oh my God. This pearling has, uh, after hearing your. Uh, after hearing you in its mind, in its dreams, uh, throughout its entire life, as you were able to control the flow of time, you have been able to pinpoint and select points in time where they are uh, going to be certain places at certain times. You are able to manipulate the flow of time around them, protect them from danger. They, uh, they look at you like none other. Uh, which tribe would this pair have belonged to? The, the fire uh, tribe or the earth tribe? It would have been on the far southern continent, as far away from the main conflict as possible. Oh, so this is from the new congregation of pearlings. Oh my god, Exactly. Yes. 
As the war continues to rage in the north, this pearling grows hearing your voice. Oh, Father, you have blessed me with your teachings. I devote my will, my juice, and my oh. very seed to your existence. Oh, my God. And if possible, I would like to grant it a, a small fraction of my power as a god grants a cleric their power. Oh or Celestial Warlock, if you, if uh, that oh is what you believe would be better. I, yeah. I, I would devote my my uh, entire clan to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And my very uh, seed. Yes. So, go ahead and give me a roll plus strange. Okie doke. Uh, let me get my advanced dice roller back online. Thirteen. Oh my god. Hot damn. You have created the Chrono Pair. He is... The Chrono Pair. Yes, this pair uh, has taken of your wisdom, your your wisdom of infinite timeliness, and has begun to build the uh, Great Empire god damn. of New Pearland. And I impart upon the pair that while... Difficult times are indeed hurtful. They are necessary to grow strong. And sometimes one must experience chaos in order to grow strong. They are here because of the chaos in the north. And as such, they have grown stronger for it. But one must always try to protect one's own even this... from chaos, but you must never allow yourself to grow weaker or complacent. This pair is uh, seen as a very wise and just ruler, and with your knowledge of this land, uh, begins a perilous journey across the land filled with herbivores and some carnivores to... Uh, form a colony in the most defensible position that they can find in the crook of this mountain by this uh, by this lake. A proper water source and a proper defense. They form their empire. Uh, they form the heart of their empire in this land. As this uh, as this pair grows on, eventually the Firebringers do eventually win their war. Their religious zealotry and violent fervor eventually overcoming that of the more peaceful and uh, studious earthen pairs. And when they finally cast aside the last of the peaceful pairs, their conqueror and hero, burned and scarred as he is, steps into their most holy of temples dedicated to you, Gaia, lights a ring of fire around it and begins a prayer in the name of Legion. What my grandsire started, I have finished. I shall be your champion. I'd like Speak to, to me, Flamebringer! Do you want to appear there? Like, just kind of like... Oof. Kind of in the form of them a little bit? Like, clearly... A, 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 burn, a, a, a burning pear sitting upon a rock forms in front of the the, uh, the champion. Ah, wow. You did a good job, all things considered. However, I got some good news and bad news. Which would you like first? Whatever it is your will, my lord. The mighty Pericles is here to serve. Ugh. You have to say good news or bad news, though. His eyes, like, just, shh, like, really, like, come on now. Do you want the good news or the bad news? I will take the good news. The good news is congratulations. You won my bet. Uh, the bad news is, however... I just don't care for you guys that much. And then he immediately claps his hands and just shoots fire all around them. Oh. 
Uh, screams of the pears erupt from the treetops uh, as this entire colony begins to burn and erupt in fire. They begin to attempt to escape. Uh, some of them oh, fleeing towards... Oh, yeah. Uh, but in, in the chaos, a lot of them are dying. Uh, they flee to the stables to hop on their fire-bellied geckos to ride away where many of the manatee pigs are waiting for them below. This violence fire destroys the entirety of the southern forest and many of those that have went on this crusade now curse your name and continue to do so for centuries excellent now the god of destruction won't be worshipped he'll be considered a double edged sword <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, excellent now there won't be reverence for me but fear which is important for you even keep if... saying that, I don't think you understand the implication of what that word means. You you say that. What? Them. I didn't kill a single one of them. They killed themselves. Well, I did you kill the ones at the did end. Did light them on fire. Uh, to be fair. Well, they were murderers. Them. Oh, stop being that way, you silver buck. The Why silver man has every man right to be upset? upset with you. Oh? Creation of life and death is his realm. Speaking you of... You use your powers recklessly. As these creatures have died, uh, you've, you've begun to notice this as more and more death, but in, in this particular instance, the essence of their life continues floating around the planet. The life that you gave them, the life force, the divine life force that came from your very form, Silver Man, uh, it permeates the atmosphere. It's, uh, Pox finally pops back into existence after another few millennia. Uh, it's, the, uh, soul scape is getting a little crowded out here. We should probably figure out what to do with all this energy. What can we do with it? Well, I suppose the Silver Man would have the best idea. This is his realm, after all. They suffer so much in their life. What is next for them? I hmm. wonder. We could start a different planet. Mm. Give them a second chance after they die on this one. Perhaps. I'm going to reach a bony finger out. And I'm going to begin drawing a gate in the starlight. A glowing golden gate. What is your intent to uh, be on the other side of this gate as you begin to form with a radiant light uh, etching among the star lines? Um, I am going to create the afterlife. I'm going to create heaven. Oh, I'm going to create, it. I'm going to create heaven. Awesome, dude. All right. On the other side of this gate will be the resting place for these souls. Given the that uh, time and space is uh, kind of my thing as well, I will assist him in this endeavor. All right. Creating like a like a separate location, a separate space. In order to uh, basically bend this world to his will, you are basically pulling stars in the sky together to form this constellation. On the planet, these intelligent pairs are taking note of what is happening amongst the night sky. Uh, as they see the very stars shifting, the great cleric that you have uh, given power takes due note and sees this gate constellation form and watches as all of these wisping spirits begin to fly upwards towards it as a small tear in space-time opens 
consuming these souls one after the other. I, I am going to appear before the souls. As they approach trepidatiously, they float before you with reverence and no small amount of fear. Be not afraid, for I am your father, and you are my children. You have done well, you have done all you can, and now it is time for you to begin again with no fear. Come with me. Give me a roll plus charm. By the way, I really feel like you guys see me as the bad guy, and I don't like that. I feel really attacked. Uh, I mean, you did burn all of the people that you told to, like, follow, follow uh, you. Yeah, a fair a fair few of the pair souls flip you off. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to look at my charm. It's plus two. Uh, not bad. Twelve. They uh, all seem to be at ease with your explanation and pass through with little to no resistance. Wow. And as the last one siphons through, the portal begins to seal itself. As the constellation in the sky remains the same, that heavenly gates, the pearly gates, as it were, to them. Oh my god. And, How long were you sitting on that one? Not long. Gaia. Yes. Would you join me a moment? Of course. And I'm going to appear out of the ashes of the burnt down forest, my form will appear. Uh, the manatee pigs that were consuming the roasted pear bodies sk uh -huh. skitter away in terror. Gaia rises out of the earth and stands next to him. These uh, the, scare me. The rockadiles that were standing near the rocks flee. They fear what they do not understand, as was shown by Legion. That is true. They do not understand each other. They do not understand why I created them. We should make beings that do understand. Would you can such a thing be done? If we work together, we can try. I have an idea. And he'll reach out for her hand. So, like, start to raise her hand. She's going to, like, hesitate for a moment and then take it anyway. Do not be afraid. I cannot harm you. Even it if is I not could, I you would not. that I fear. It is what we might do that I fear. We can only do so much when creating. This is true. But when you're destroying, you can do everything! <laughs> Not now, Legion. Oh, hush! I'm just giving you some storms. It's gonna be a rainy season, I think. As thunder, as thunder, as thunder cracks in the sky. Besides, least... I'm thinking about heading and really messing it up by... Maybe heading between the two continents and really heating up that particular part. Hell, it may be so much water and rain, it might just turn into a forest that's nothing but rain. Let's see what happens. See you guys when you need a little bit of chaos. And then you see him just into the water again. Legion I has may. left you. 
I may have to make mountains too high to bother his be bothered by his storms. Would, would you help me make a tree? Of course. And I would like to create life in the form of a tree that is humanoid. It has musculature. It has facial features. You want to create an ent? Yep. Sort that of. Like to me. Ent All right. or a dryad. All right. Uh, go ahead and uh, give me a roll plus strange. Actually, both of you give me a roll plus strange. And I will take the uh, best of each of your two d6s. Eleven. Thirteen. Oh All right. So between the two of you together, you begin to raise life in this land as these living tree people begin popping up. young and uh, un unaware of everything at first, but they grow incredibly intelligent incredibly quickly as they grow. The rains that Legion has created is uh, further uh, helping them grow. Trees of many different shapes and sizes, some as tall as uh, 30, 40, 50 feet, some shorter. Maybe as short as, like, you know, 5 to 10 feet. They're all still very tall. I mean, they're fucking trees. Uh, <laughs> but eventually, you start seeing them as colonies as well, start to pop up and propagate around this area. This forest community... Uh, the remaining pair folk of the north, uh, still kind of, uh, kind of shaken of their religious zealotry after what happened to their crusade, uh, begin to intermingle with these tree folk. The tree folk are wise and understanding. They, they live a lot longer than the pair folk do. And they are also significantly hardier. They adapt the pear folks' technology very quickly, all their sciences, and it is clear very quickly that they are becoming a more dominant and propagant race. As they live longer, it does take them a lot longer to come to maturity, but this tree colony continues to spread, and as they do not require much by way of nutrients uh, they basically feed off of the dead life force in the ground uh, the mulch that is created from the bodies of the dead pears dead pear folk and the dead uh, seal deers the dead rockadiles the dead manatee pigs and all of the other various uh, small mammalian and amphibious life forces that have begun to pop up They start to uh, build outward and southward as they create more and more colonies. Eventually, they start using the bones of the uh, fallen creatures to create rafts and boats. Not using any of their own people, of course, to try to create these things. That would be absolutely fucking barbaric. But with these leather meat boats... They start oh sailing God. the seas, trying to navigate this massive storm that has popped up in between the continents. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, like, that's pretty brutal, all things considered. Eventually, they do make landfall and start pro and start uh, building out their, col their new colony out this way. But in the amount of time that has taken... 
a mighty pair empire undisturbed has grown. Excellent. All father, hmm? the your your Claire your Peric, I guess. I don't know. Uh, he he eventually passed. As as much as he could oh. control time, he could not have stayed forever. But his uh, but his lineage lived on. Uh, and I would I would do the same thing with his successors and anybody that showed a clear devotion and a desire to uh, continue what he sought, they would be able to gain the knowledge of the All Father as well. As well, you are at a you are at a cross point in history at this point because the son of the previous emperor is claiming to be the cleric and has exiled the true cleric claiming them to be a claiming them to be a false prophet and has begun seizing power for themselves and uh, creating more and more uh, of a tyrannical rule under his fist and sees this encroaching civilization of tree people as an invasion of his lands. A new war begins God. as this pair begins to pray to all that would listen to keep these lands his own. Damn. Silverman, I think my joke was not as funny as I had hoped. I don't create jokes. I create life. True. Though the fruit with legs was funny when first created. The tree folk are very peaceful and non-militant. They're scholars by nature. So Are when they... these pairs that have learned how to harness the powers of the creatures, the herbivores that live on this land, weaponize them against any dissenters, begin to descend on their lands, riding these... Uh, uh, first of all, they, they <laughs> domesticated these viperous wolves that... Uh, live on these lands that have helped them tame the lands of these herbivores that would be their natural predators and in doing so have also found these herbivores to be a decent siege weapon against any sort of dissenting pear tribe they have turned these herbivores on the tree folk who while hardy do not have the same means of escaping the herbivores that the pears do by climbing trees, since they are themselves too large. But I would imagine that they're hardy enough to not really be bothered. Like, it would take forever for them to be injured, though, right? You start whittling away at a trunk at a tree's trunk, it will die. True. The, the kingdom will notice that after he banished that after he banished the quote unquote false prophet boons and gifts and knowledge that was once there and once that was freely given begin to whittle up whittle away and fade as though a river running dry the Question, questioners and dissenters are all treated with the same iron fist. They either fall in line or they fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. hmm. But mainly the, the sun specifically. Time begins acting strangely around him. Moments that he thought that should only take a moment seems to feel like it's taking an eternity but moments that he feels namely moments that he is drawing joy passes by in an instant whereas moments that he is in 
anguish or in sadness seems to stay for far longer than it should. Oof. Time. Give me a give me a roll plus strange to see how this affects the pair. Okay. Mm. Mm. Six. Mm, okay. Your actions in an effect to try to sway him have only driven him mad. Oh shit. You now have a mad conqueror driving as much force northward as he can. The tree folk seeing no other option than to become militant as well. Is this how it always must be? The true pair, the true cleric, while he is exiled. He's been exiled down to these southern trees here. Mm -hmm. He's been hamleted. He's the All Father will continue within his mind for encouragement to let him know that while there is a false one in the kingdom there's still so much that he can do even though he does not even though it would be against the kingdom he knows that this is not right and this is not chaos that makes you strong this is chaos that makes you weak by ripping the kingdom apart and the all father will attempt to persuade him to begin to collect followers as well to try to sway the populace back away from the rule of the king namely he's also going to be focusing on guards and positions of guards as well as those that are close to him close to the the mad king so to speak He's as, trying to explain the people. As, as your cleric, he listens to you very closely. But I'm going to want you to make a charm roll for him, basically. Go ahead Absolutely. And give me a roll plus charm. Uh, let me double check something very quickly. All right. That is a plus two. That is a 13. All right. Ooh. You have essentially created the pair Dalai Lama. Uh, he begins pulling uh, more and more followers to his side, those that see the Mad King for what he is. He creates this small shadow cell where he travels between these two kingdoms. It takes weeks of travel, but he creates uh, almost an underground railroad of sorts to try to get those peace-loving pairs out of this monster's territory as his war continues to rage up in the north. Uh, it looks like these tree folk are going to dwindle in number to the point that they will be completely driven out of this continent should I'm nobody going, intervene. I'm going to, after one of these battles, I will appear out of the broken shards of bark and plant-like sinew. My 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 cloak will be made of moss and my horns will be made of wood uh, there will still be a silver glow to my eyes and to the markings on my robe as well and around you swirl the souls of the dead and the lost the uh, tree folk stand in reverence as the pairs uh, kind of hold back their mounts. Uh, these pairs who have grown probably the size of very large pumpkins at this point, maybe two or three feet tall. They're still not big, but they're they're It's, funny to, look, it's funny to imagine. <laughs> yes. The so uh, they, you basically stopped this uh, like this battle that was already like a complete victory for the pairs. Uh, who were just about to swing in and wipe up what's left of the surviving tree people in this region. You have all is, of their attention. Is this all that you know? 
do you only destroy? Talking to the pairs. We seek, we seek glory. This land, it was, it was given to us. It belongs to us. These are invaders. Is that what you think? It is what we know. Our glorious leader deemed it so. He was given a, a vision. A vision by the gods themselves. Be you one, or be you a deceiver. Gods. Is that what you call us? I suppose I am one of them. And he'll turn to the uh, the the tree people. Uh, their limbs and bodies splintered and ravaged, leaking sap. You have known only peace throughout all this time. And he'll start uh, moving over to some of the more some of the more heavily damaged trees. Uh, one which is completely cracked in half, leaking sap, slowly draining its slowly draining of life, being cradled by a uh, larger tree. I will reach my skeleton-like hands out, and they will be they will be silvery as well. And I will put my hands on him, and I will breathe magic into him, life magic. That's a very simple thing for you to do, as you basically, uh, men, as you basically, kind of like forcefully mend the broken like trunk of this tree man together. You can see the color return to their leaves, as the faces and of those that are wounded, like, lighten up and go to awe. The uh, pear folk begin to uh, falter. In their morale and then there there was someone treating that that tree folk that was on the ground right yeah you you it takes you little to no effort to heal anything within your vicinity I will I will reach another hand around and my skeleton like fingers will clasp against the bark of their head and more life magic will begin to flow into them and I will bestow upon them healing powers. Oh, now that's going to require a roll plus strange. Making tree Jesus and all that. Mm-hmm. Tree Jesus. Ah, tree Jesus, yeah. Tree Jesus. Tree Jesus. I summon, I summon you, tree Jesus. Oh, my uh, 12. God. 12. Oh. God. Its eyes glow with the same silvery glow as this tree sits up. Once again. I have risen. Oh. It holds its hand out, walks over to one of the wounded trees, mends its uh, mends its broken bark and splintered, walks out towards the battlefield. The uh, pears who are kind of like splitting, it walks up to a wounded pear, puts its hand out, and the pear begins to heal over as well. None deserve this violence. They can't see it because his face is a mask, but there is there is an air of happiness that appears when he does that. Tell your leader, we do not wish harm to your land. We want a place to live just as you. And perhaps we can live together. Time passes and people uh, like the the returning warriors from this battle uh, speak the words of Treasus and uh, his word begins spreading and the power of the false prophet 
begins diminishing as he becomes more and more paranoid as more and more of his people begin flocking off to the Dolly Pear Llama. Oh my and, God. <laughs> uh, following the words of Treasus, eventually he is killed by his uh, advisors and oh. a new leader is installed and peace is brought to this continent, at least for now. And here. Meanwhile, thousands of miles <laughs> miles away. <laughs> What's been going on? <laughs> and this is where we are going to end today's session.